Hello and welcome to Spinster's Kitchen. I'm Claudia and today in the kitchen rather than the office because we are talking about this cookbook by Jack Monroe with the title Tim Can Cook. I want to talk about this book while making one of the recipes from this book so I'm going to get started straight away. Uh, the recipe I want to make is a dessert recipe and it is for rhubarb and custard crumble. So if you haven't figured it out from the title and the cover picture, this is a cookbook that uses almost entirely canned ingredients. So the recipe that I'm making today, the rhubarb and custard crumble, uses tinned rhubarb, got this one here, and also tinned custard, which I have here. The recipe calls for two tins of each, um, which is supposed to serve six. Uh, I don't have six people to feed, so I'm going to halve the recipe, use one can of each, as well as some flour, some butter, some oats, and some sugar. The first step is to preheat the oven to 180 degrees. So let me go and do that now. Second step is tip the can of drained rhubarb into the bottom of an oven-proof dish. Have an oven-proof dish here. And I have a sieve here as well, so I'm going to just drain the rhubarb. Oh, you know what, with all the things I've prepared, I actually forgot to get the can opener. Ugh. Now, um, the author, Jack Monroe, you might not be familiar with them, but if you're in the UK, you've probably heard of them, because uh, they became popular for a food blog that specifically focuses on budget recipes and I don't mean the sort of thing that TV chefs think is budget but I mean actual recipes that cost much less than a pound per serving for example they also use a lot of you know tinned, uh, tinned ingredients as well as dried spices frozen ingredients things that are cheap and accessible they have been writing from personal experience in terms of food poverty and they are a big advocate against food poverty um, so this recipe book really is a combination of these efforts to make sure that people who have a smaller budget for food can still feed themselves in a healthy and fun way i love canned produce for example so canned rhubarb, something I get very regularly. Also things like chickpeas or beans, although I, I often get them dried as well. Mango slices, generally speaking canned beans are delicious. So I love canned produce, but what I never ever buy and what I never ever use is canned pre-made foods. So for example, I have a can of custard here until I read a can of custard in this recipe book, I didn't even know that you could get custard in cans. And that's entirely because I'm a bit of a food snob. I consider myself a pretty good cook. I've had a lot of cooking experience. You do when you grow up with Italian parents. So I've always been cooking and I prefer to make things from scratch. So when I see a recipe that wants custard, I would usually make it from scratch. I'd get eggs, the vanilla pod, the cream, sugar and I'd make a beautiful custard just from scratch. However, not everyone has the cooking skill and the cooking experience to make their own custard and not everyone has the means because vanilla pods are really expensive whereas this can of custard I believe was 49p. So there's, um, there's a lot to say for using ready-made ingredients and ready-made uh, foods from cans. And this recipe book is a good mix of both. So there are some recipes, for example, the butter bean and cider cassoulet, which uses a, a tin of cannellini beans, a tin of butter beans, a tin of carrots, that uses the raw ingredients, well, not raw, but the single ingredients. And then there are other recipes that use pre-prepared cans, like for example, canned soups, uh, canned custard, canned sauces, uh, canned processed meat, all sorts of things like that. So there's quite a big variety in this book, which I appreciate. Right, going to add the drained rhubarb into the dish now. Pour the custard on top of the rhubarb. That's interesting because normally when I make crumbles, 
it's just the fruit and the crumble topping and I would serve the custard on the side but this recipe actually tells me to put the custard on top of the rhubarb and then the crumble topping on top so I'll try that for the first time ever Ooh, this is weird so we pour that over top the the custard to fruit ratio is quite something That's really good. So like I said, I'm quite an experienced cook. I'm quite good. I have a good cooking instinct. Um, I don't really, I'm not really the target audience for recipe books in general because I tend to cook without recipes. And when I do use a recipe, I'll usually just look it up online and then more often than not, I'll adapt it to my liking. Today I'm deliberately sticking to the recipe step by step because oh, I want to see what my pure recipe tastes like. Uh, so for the crumble topping here it says in a large mixing bowl, this one's not so large but I am using half the recipe, tip in 100 grams of plain flour, 50 grams of butter, add the oats and sugar after that. This is a British recipe book therefore it uses weight measurements rather than volume measurements so if you are in america and you use cups and tablespoons and ounces whatever an ounce is then i'm afraid you will have to convert these recipes however you could just get a food scale because weight measurements are much more precise than volume measurements okay i have my digital food scale here 100 grams of flour and 50 grams of butter. The butter is actually what makes this recipe less budget friendly than many of the others in the book because butter is really quite expensive at the moment. I think this one packet was £1.50. Okay, now if you've never made a crumble before, the technique for getting this all to mix is pretty much to just rub the ingredients between your fingertips until they're all, until the butter has been absorbed into the flour really. So the main selling point of this recipe book is that it is food bank friendly. In the UK, uh, food banks have had to supply a greater and greater number of people in recent years because food prices have been rising and wages and benefits have not. Now, I'm in a very privileged position in that I have never felt the need to go to a food bank, but a lot of people do and uh, oftentimes the sorts of foods you get at the food bank don't encourage healthy eating and they don't encourage cooking and Jack Monroe's book is deliberately designed to be easy for people both who are novices at cooking and for people who don't have access to the sorts of equipment and the sorts of facilities maybe that other recipe books and other cookbook authors just assume you have. Again, I'm in a very privileged position. I have a nice big kitchen with all of the bits that I need. And um, the cookbook doesn't exclude people like me either. So in the foreword, Jack Monroe writes about how you can, as an experienced cook, you can just replace ingredients to your liking. So for example, um, a lot of recipes use uh, pre, you know, like uh, tins or jarred, garlic, you know, the stuff that you just have to spoon out the jar and then use, but it's really easy to use fresh garlic if you have access to it. Or for example, the recipe uses a lot of frozen uh, pre-chopped onion, but you can very easily replace it with fresh onion. So even if you are an experienced cook, you can still get a lot out of these recipes. Right, so this is the texture that I am looking for in crumble. Let me show you. Can you see that? It's often described as being like breadcrumbs, uh, but actually it's a lot lighter than breadcrumbs and quite soft. Should have pre-weighed my sugar and my oats, because now I'm just going to have to do that with floury hands. Ah, uh, I'm going to get this cookbook dirty already. That's what they're for. Right. 50 grams of oats and 25 grams of sugar. I, I didn't even get the sugar out of the cupboard. I'm so good at this. Okay. So 
so let me add 25 grams of sugar and 50 grams Ugh. what did I say 50 grams of oats okay this is what the finished crumble topping looks like nice and oaty and I'm going to sprinkle that over the top of the custard that's what that looks like so that's going in the oven now for 40 minutes I'm gonna put this in the oven I'll wash my hands and then I'll be back to talk about the actual book the crumbles in the oven now which means I've let cats back into the kitchen and let's talk about the tin can cook as the cover says this book has got 75 store cupboard recipes and they're all kinds of different recipes so there's different sections for example for breakfast recipes uh, soups there's a section just about beans which are a fantastic source of protein that you can get really cheap in cans and there's recipes for potato recipes pasta fish and meat also all canned uh, as well as desserts which is where i took my crumble recipe from the bit that i really like in the introduction is something jack monroe calls can splaining uh, if you're watching this i commend you for the pun that's uh, i like that and the can splaining section is there to dispel some myths about canned food including is it actually good for you? Is it actually healthy for you? And um, they've just listed a lot of things that I, some of them I didn't even know you can get in a can. So it tells you about the different types of ingredients you can get in a can and then, then what's good about them in terms of nutrition. So for example, peaches, it says here. Got me some canned peaches there. Minerva, you're not gonna like them. And it says here, a good source of both fiber and vitamin C. So there's always different variations. For example, uh, sweet corn and peas, two of my favorite vegetables that I pretty much never get fresh because they are so expensive. Corn on the cob is really, really very expensive, but canned corn and frozen corn is incredibly cheap. Peas, they just don't grow that well here and they are almost always better frozen and i do like that this recipe book uses these canned ingredients and frozen ingredients and store covered ingredients and creates fantastic dishes just out of those now if you are vegan or vegetarian you will still find plenty of recipes in there mainly because as i said uh, this has got an entire section about beans and they really are one of the staples if you don't uh, eat animal products they're one of the staples for getting your protein and all of the recipes that are vegan or vegetarian are tagged as such up here what i also like about these recipes is that most of them don't require any specialist equipment in fact i'm not even sure if there are any recipes that I, where you actually need a chopping board and a knife for for most of these you just need your can opener and a pot on the hob there's even one recipe that doesn't require any hob at all that you can just use a kettle for this is a very very well thought out recipe book from the, the can splaining section at the beginning, it also gives you a little bit of a crash course in nutrition, where it tells you about different nutrients, how much of that you need, what you need them for, and which foods you find them in. It really just gives you all the tools to feed yourself in a nutritionally balanced way while also getting a bit of variety into your life. Not all recipes in this book are super healthy. There's also some indulgent recipes there. For example, the three tin tender beef in a sort of barbecue sauce, uh, which uses a can of tomatoes, a bottle of cola, and a, a can of stewed steak. So not every recipe here is nutritionally balanced, but you know what? Not every meal has to be. And there are plenty of healthy recipes to make up for that. I really like how this book is structured. It's the recipes themselves, as you can see, they're very short, 
the instructions are very to the point. It doesn't use any unnecessary culinary lingo, which I appreciate. And uh, you can you can see everything at a glance. It doesn't have any pictures in there apart from some illustrations, but it doesn't have any glossy photos. And that's really not what this book is about. This is a practical book. This is meant to be used. This is meant to be get dirty in the kitchen. This isn't a sort of book with like gorgeous photo illustrations that you keep on your bookshelf but never actually open. Right at the end there is an index so you can look up any ingredient and then see if there's if there are recipes using that ingredient. So for example let's see if there is a recipe in this book that uses canned mango. I'm not sure if there will be but let's have a look. Ooh, there we go. Mango and coconut porridge found an M for mango on page 36. Anything else that I want to say about this book? Uh, yes, if you want to get a taster for Jack Monroe's recipes, I will link their websites down below and that's got plenty of recipes on there that you can filter again by different ingredients and things like that. And they also, you uh, put the price per serving down. Now this book, this is a family recipe book the the recipes usually feed anywhere between four and eight people in my house it's just me my husband and the cats who don't tend to eat human food although they also like canned food of course to use this for my own family i'm going to have to half the recipes where possible or otherwise uh, freeze or refrigerate the leftovers i've also costed up the recipe that i've made just now just to see how affordable this actually is and this is what it came to in my case I got a can of rhubarb for 90p custard was 49p the butter was £1.49 definitely the most expensive ingredient here and then the ingredients I already had at home were the oats which I got for 75p per kilogram I got the flour for 45p for one and a half kilos and I got the sugar for £1.38 per kilo so overall the recipe is costing me £2.88 in new ingredients and then a few extra pennies for the ingredients that I already had. It should serve three but actually that's quite a full casserole dish so I'm going to go ahead and say there's actually four servings in there which makes each serving around about 60 to 70p. That's pretty good for a dessert. Now I just have to wait for the crumble to finish cooking. Alexa, how long on the timer? You have 23 minutes left on your 40 minute timer. The crumble is ready. Crumble? Mmm, yeah. Have you ever had a crumble? Oh, also, I've got Bill here for the taste testing. Yup. Have you ever had a crumble where you put the custard in under the crumble topping? I have not. No, I haven't either. That's why I thought this was interesting. So the, the custard has sort of bobbled up in places. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna try it now. Oh, I'm failing failing at serving. Maybe we should have got the big serving spoon for this. It's very liquid. It's very liquid, yes. Yeah, just dump it on. Just pour some just in there. Just pour it. It's a good. Uh, it's a lot of crumble, though, isn't it? Like the topping's quite thick. Mm. Um. Yeah, I was on the plate. It doesn't look great. So this is a uh, not one for Instagram. Let's try it then. What do you think? It's hot. Should have blown on it. <laughs> mm, that's good. I think it's fine, right? That's really good. Yeah, you know, I was a bit suspicious about using canned custard because I, I didn't even know you could get custard in a can. Mm -hmm. But actually, that's perfectly fine. Mm. Rhubarb is delicious. I really like rhubarb. You can get the book on Amazon. There will be links in the description box. And Jack Monroe set up a donation page as well. So if you want to donate this book to uh, food banks so that they can give them out to their users, then I'll put a link in the description box as well where you can donate to that. If you think this might not be for you, but you still want to give this to someone, then please go and use that link to donate. Just gonna, just gonna finish the crumble then. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. Bye.